Gambit Chads, hear me out. That is all I ask. That is all I ask. And by the end of this video, I promise you that I will convince you of C4 A6 on the very first move. And if not, well, that's your loss. And we might have to settle that debate over the 64 squares. But the other thing that you will get at the very end of this video, in addition to being a be much better chess player as a result of seeing all the cool ideas that I'm so, so excited to share with you uh, of C4A6. The other thing you'll get at the end of this video is me beating a very, very strong player uh, on stream yesterday uh, who, who was number one in the arena. So I'm so, so excited to show you that game as well. But I know this is looks ridiculous. And I know if I clicked on a video <laughs> as, you know, a uh, enjoyer of chess YouTube content myself, if I clicked on a video that recommended something like this, I would probably be clicking away pretty quickly because this is ridiculous and what are we doing here pushing a pawn on the edge of the board instead of staking our claim in the middle of the board but but <laughs> we have several several tricks up our sleeve and so hear me out hear me out that's all that's all i have to say and this is the other thing i'd like to point out here is this is the coolest kind of opening innovation this is the coolest kind of opening innovation because because this is unnamed you saw here this is called english opening and like any other move you play here is, you know, English opening, this says Anglo-Indian defense or whatever, like any other legitimate move, this is still just English opening. And just to underscore how rare that is, there is no move you can play here that, that I found that isn't, that isn't something named. This is the lemming defense, <laughs> or this is, uh, what do we got here? Goldsmith defense. I, I literally, I, I was actually trying. I didn't even check that before. Okay, but we found something unnamed. And not only that, not only have we found something unnamed, but I'm actually going to justify this. I actually do think this is legitimate and I beat a very, very strong player with it in my very first game. And I do think this is definitely, definitely catches your opponent completely, completely off guard. And so, so many fun sacrifices here. Like, our first 10 moves can be pawn moves, and we can end up completely winning. Absolutely crazy stuff. Let's waste no more time. Let's get right to it. The most common move by far, as, you know, English players very often follow up C4 with just the very natural knight C3. And it looks like that move knight C3 stops maybe what would be our one idea with the move A6, which is to play B5 next and, and strike at this pawn in the middle of the board. It does not stop that. It just makes it all the more fun. <laughs> B5. And now with B5... So you see knight c3, by far the most common move, and we'll get to moves actually other than knight c3 uh, towards the end of this video. But with b5, we want to play b4. And so it makes it very hard to just ignore this pawn. Also, maybe we want to take this, but, but it, chiefly we want to just kick this knight away. Uh, and this knight, you know, might not have fun. It might be just like running all over the place. And so, and so you know, okay, they take this pawn as, you know, okay, what's the percent here? 64% of people are taking this pawn. After a takes b5, again, again, we want to push b4. Okay, so knight takes b5. Okay, we're down a pawn. We're down a pawn <laughs> very, very quickly. It's very fast, even by my standards, the Gambit Man himself. Even by my standards, move four, already down a pawn. I will show you what you're dealing with here. Let's turn on Mr. Fish. Turn on Mr. Fish. He's not a fan of things. Oh, well. I mean, yeah, he's like, yeah, it's just a pawn. It's just a pawn. He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the deal with this position. I mean, most people are playing bishop a6, bishop b7, some move hitting the knight right away. But it's not really necessary to do something like this because overwhelmingly what white players want to do is you're like, ah, oh, what's going on? Is they want to just bring this knight right back, right? And so we play this move d5. And still the most common move is to bring the knight right back. d4 is the engine recommendation and is almost the most common move here, you see. Uh, and we'll get to that after getting to the most common move, knight c3, which is a big mistake, and already here black is doing excellently, because so they really, really wanted to retreat their knight, they didn't want this knight pestered by b4, so they took a pawn, they came back. This is going to backfire on them, <laughs> this is going to backfire on them, because we are chasing this knight maximally, and like, all of white's moves will have to be with this knight now. Uh, you see the most common move here is this move, knight e4, which is probably, you know, makes sense that it's most common, but the best move according to the engine is this move knight to b1, which I'll touch on really briefly, um, because it's not very common, but all you need to do is stick a massive claim in the center with e5, so I play something natural like d3, and then this really nice move queen to d5, and there's a couple nice things that queen d5 does, and you'll, you'll see this as a common pattern in these lines, uh, but it puts a lot of pressure over here, and also as the initial arrow indicated, it threatens to actually grab your pawn back, and already there's no games in the database, but I'll just show you a couple things here. Bishop b4 check, I want to demonstrate that idea that the b4 square can be used in these lines because of the pin on that rook, they can't take this bishop. 
because they will lose this rook. So then they block here. The, the point of that was also to take away like an 2 And now all these arrows indicate excellent ways that black can develop. And already here, black has a ton of compensation for this pawn. Um, and I would much rather be black already because you, you see here, so like, let's say a couple natural moves get played. Already here, e4 is very strong, or you can just castle and eventually e4. Black pieces are doing great. The, the the nice thing about this queen on d5 is that this pawn on d4 really clears the way for it, right? There's no c 3 there's no e4. I mean, we have en passant at the very least, but the queen on d5 just sits very excellently as a result of that pawn. Okay, so you'll see that, I, that idea come through a couple other times. So knight e4, and of course, we keep after this knight. F5, we keep after this knight. So knight g3, okay, 20 out of 20 people are playing that. Keep after the knight with h5. With h5, so if we just played f4, then this knight would jump right back to e4. But now with h5, we are threatening to trap the knight on h4. Already this knight has been for a wild ride that's like one, two, three, four, five knight moves already on move seven of the game. And we have seven pawn moves on move seven of the game, and we're going to have more. So what can we do here? What can we do? Well, if they play here e3, which creates this square, then after d3, they are in a ton of trouble and nothing good to do here really because h4 is coming just answering e3 with d3 really nice idea the queen defends there from the bishop uh takes away that e 2 square if they then take on h5 the situation's even worse just let move like an c6 or pawn e5 they just <laughs> I'll, I'll turn on the engine here i'll turn on the engine here it's like minus 1.5 because we're, we're gonna play e4 and and just develop our pieces really naturally this knight can just waltz right into c2 it's pretty hard to stop it because you don't have a3 to take away this square because of this pin on the rook. So, so much good stuff here. Um, and just impossible for white to move their pieces. So, it's, it, it's some pretty fun lines. Okay, h4, white, white, white should probably play to take away h4. But the downside of this move is that white will never be able to really castle because then queen takes h4 if that rook's no longer there. So now after just move like e5, there's two games in the database, black one them both. But we've now played eight moves, all pawn moves, and we might keep up that streak. We might keep up that streak. So there's uh, two moves that have been played here. I'll touch on them both briefly. Uh, one of them is this move d3, knight of six, bishop g5. So this, in, in this position, black won this game anyway with this move e4, just also running, running them over. But black here has a really nice trick with this move f4. It looks like white has knight e4, but we have a very, very nice tactic here. You can pause the video and try to find it. With f4, we were trying to play bishop to b4 check, taking away bishop d2 coming back. At this moment, they still have knight d2 as a block. But if we just take that knight and then give our queen, we have bishop to b4 check, and they have to go queen d2, after which uh, they are down a ton of material. So so, so just some really nice quick knockouts there. Uh, I mean, knight f3 was also playable because after e4, this knight looks like maybe it has this square it can hang out with on. Um, but just queen d5, again, a really nice move. And again, we have knight of six and f4 if we can take away this capture. The a2 pawn is hanging. I mean, this position is just killing. Because e3, we answer with d3. And d3, we answer with e3. <laughs> it looks like, okay, wait, we just lost a pawn. But this knight is actually just so poorly placed. We have bishop d6. And as some arrows indicate here, this knight's actually completely lost. Because, there, first of all, it has nowhere to go. It has nowhere to go. And this is like... You know, you're just gonna take the knight. We're okay, actually f4, and you know we have a fork and all these other great things going on. So bishop to f2 to defend it. Then that, le and then there's no bishop to d2 to block. Okay, but e3 was just was just um one of the many ways to kind of put white away here because they're just so cramped and these pawns are just running them over and these poor knights get chased everywhere. So it's so so fun when they play like this and literally. We just followed all the most common moves. I literally just followed from a6. That's a Lee Chess challenge for you, for, for fans of my channel. Lee Chess challenge is, can you make your opponent completely lost and quickly if they play all the most common moves? So a6 solves the Lee Chess challenge. These were all the most common moves. Okay, and that, that is knight c3. That, that covers knight c3, the most common move. All we do is we chase this knight, and we just take a monster center, and there's so, so many quick putaways as... um as I demonstrated here. Okay, what should white do? What should white do? Let's get to the nasty stockfish recommendations, which at the end of this video, there is a game that I, it's just a stream recording um, from yesterday where my opponent, very strong player, played this move and more stockfish recommendations even after it. Okay, it looks like with d4, I mean, we chased the snake back, but now we're just down a pawn and they've staked actually their own claim in the center. We can't just keep running them over with d4. Or can we? Or can we? Let's sacrifice another pawn with this move e5. Okay, now here, white has d takes e5, after which we will continue to play d4 and come after this knight. <laughs> we're, just, we're just never going to stop going after this knight. Or they have these other moves, knight of 3 and e3, 
uh, there's a game here with Eric Rosen actually where, where, where he chose one of those options. Uh, let's cover them briefly. Let's cover them briefly because they're, they're not super good options. White really should be taking this pawn even though we've got just under or just about half of the players are playing d takes e5 in this position. But so let's cover here knight f3. And here we just play e4. Uh, and this knight really just doesn't have anything good to do. e5 gets the knight trapped to f6. If they had that pawn there, they would have queen h5 check. If, but otherwise, this knight's just completely lost. And so knight d2 should be played. But now after just bishop to d6 and like e3, uh, this is a very, very good position for black. This is a very, very good position for black. And I'll even turn on the engine here. Um, yeah, I'll even turn on the engine here. So that's minus one almost, even though we are down a pawn. So why is this position so good? Why is this position so good? It's everything. It's all the good parts of the French and none of the bad parts of the French. So basically a French would be like if white had a pawn here and black had pawns here and here, or it would be like a reversed French, right? And in that case, white would have some pressure points. They could attack d5. They could attack b7, or there would be things they could do. Here, there's just nothing. Right, like, what can you attack if you're white here? You can't attack c6. I mean, it just takes either the knight or the bishop to stymie all attacks there. Uh, f3 will never work, either due to queen h4 check or just f5, just a monster clomp over the middle of the board. Castles, kingside is actually where black is strongest here. These pawns really clear the way for a really nice diagonal and a really strong attack over here. Some of my arrows had indicated we can bring the queen out, we can bring the knight in, we can bring some, some rooks into the attack. All these pieces can come into the attack and white just really doesn't have many defenders over here and it might end really, really badly with some even Greek gift sacrifices on the table here with knight g4 check, queen h4 and, and checkmate ideas there. And if white were to castle long, well, they're also not good over there either because we have these files for our rooks, which we can attack with there, already there. So, so I mean, I really like the idea of this a6b5 and get, losing the a and b pawns for the c pawn can be a really, really good gambit if we grab the middle of the board really quickly as we did here. So, so I mean, white is another option, but it's going to be kind of similar. It's this move e3, but then we just play e4. And so this bishop also, you know, was not able to come out, which would have been much more helpful for, for white. Okay, now here white has two moves that I'll cover, which is f3 and knight e2. So knight e2 is kind of like accepting their fate as playing, you know, a, a really rough French structure where black has excellent compensation. f3 is a more immediate strike, and you should be careful actually not to play this overwhelmingly uh, common move of f5 because white will play take, take, or if they're smart, they will play take, take, and queen h5 check, and then queen e5 here which would win the rook. So we can't fall for that one, but luckily we have a very, very nice move as I played in my game on stream against a very, very strong player and number one in the arena. Uh, first time I ever played c4a6, which is move bishop DC to d6. And so bishop to d6 immediately turns queen to h4 check. So wait, here has two moves. They have g3 and f takes e4. Um, if this, f, f, if f takes e4, then we just need to go check. We just need to go check if king d2, we just grab this pawn back. There's no knight f3, and our queen will defend this pawn from the knight. So we grabbed our pawn back, and their king's in the middle of the board. And that actually is... Uh, 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 or I don't want to give too many spoilers about that game, because it's a really, really awesome game. Okay, so g3, uh, we would just take the pawn. And that's kind of how you want to take advantage of uh, opponents moving their f-pawn in the middle uh, in, in the opening, is that you want to threaten queen to h4 check. But often g3 can just force you to move back. So what you want is like a knight or like a bishop that could control the g3 square. And so if g3, you can take it, and then you would just be winning the rook if they took back your piece. So it's about control of this square to punish uh, f pawn movements with queen h4 check or queen h5 if you're the other color. And in this position, we can just retreat uh, and knight e7. And here, black has just excellent development and excellent compensation for... You know, okay, so we're gonna castle. <laughs> These are our last three pawns. These might be our last three pawns, but but they do keep our king safe, and our opponent's king is not doing so well. So it's a, a, a pretty funny position there uh, that 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 you can get into. So g3 here is also possible, but then just f5, then just f5 because now takes takes doesn't this just doesn't help white do anything right they would need something controlling g6 if they had like a knight here then they would have like knight takes g6 but otherwise okay there's no queen e5 check anymore and this queen just needs to go back and otherwise okay so you have all these nice arrows that i pointed out here in a really really nice position for black i'll turn on the engine again excellent excellent compensation so we're going to castle and this idea of bishop a6 is a really nice one swapping off for what is otherwise maybe not the best bishop for ours um, because of our, all, all our pawns on light squares in the middle of the board that are kind of blocking our diagonals. But if we swap there, then knight takes a6, then the knight can hop in, 
Again, it's hard to take away the b4 square uh, with a3 because knight b4, they can't take it because of this pin on the rook, if, if that all makes sense. So lots of good stuff here, lots and lots of good stuff. So f3, not super challenging as long as we know what to do. Uh, knight e2 is is even more, is, is the most common move here, but then just bishop to d6. So we, we just continue playing natural stuff. We just continue playing natural stuff, just develop our pieces. And here I'll show some example stuff of uh, playing here h5. Playing your h5, so knight e2, knight g3, I mean, like, how else? The thing is, how else is white getting out their pieces? There's no way this bishop can go. If it goes there, then there's no place for this knight. Can't go here. If knight h3, then there's, like, takes, force a g takes, right? Not fun. So, so this, like, makes sense. It's probably the only logical way to bring out your pieces. But then, okay, we can keep co coming after this knight with h5, threatening h4. Um, not fun to castle here, right? Because I guess... I guess, like, there's this idea of that would be mate. Even if you play h3, that would be mate, right? So... So not, not not fun to do that. Uh, and they takes h5 doesn't work because we just trade everything here and queen g5 hitting uh, both of those points that are uh, already circled. And here, this is completely winning for black. So h4 can be played, but it takes away white's idea of castling short because then, then again, queen takes h4 will happen if the rook is castled, right? And then queen h2. Also some example ideas here, which is hopping that knight right in Knight a6, knight b4, even if they take our knight, right? That, that rook is hanging, so we love taking advantage of that idea. And so rook b1 threatens our knight, but we can even actually give the knight for their one good piece. Because um, now this bishop will slice there, stopping castling forever. And after takes, just castles. And the, I'll, I'll show you, like, it's actually crazy how good this position is for black. Uh, white just has nothing to do. White just has nothing to do. This dark square bishop is horrendous. It's completely stopped by all its pawns. Um, and, you know, rook e8 is coming, queen d6 is coming, pressure here, this knight's got all these great ideas. So, again, just really, really fun stuff, really, really fun stuff. If you're able to get in e5 and e4, I just want to show some ideas there, because that's what's going to happen if they, I mean, the threat of e5, if they don't take it, the threat of e5 is to put that pawn on e4. Okay, so d takes e5 is possible. D takes e5 is possible, of course, and this is the stockfish recommendation. So, okay, just to review where we're at, we started with c4, a6. Knight c3, b5. Okay, so this is all the stockfish lines. Oops, they play d4 here. We drive the knight back and play e5. Okay, and they take our pawn. Okay, so the point is d4. Now, knight b1 is a possibility, but it doesn't really change much. Um, actually, let me get to that later. Let me get to that later. Let's just start with knight e4. So knight e4, overwhelmingly the most common move, and the point now is queen to a5 check. Queen to a5 check, and we're going to grab this pawn back. And it's actually very important how to block. Most people are playing the very natural bishop to d2, which allows queen takes e5 in style. Although knight d2 is better, and we'll get to both. So bishop to d2 here, we're going to play queen takes e5. So now we're only down one pawn. <laughs> and it has a tempo on the knight. Knight to d2 would have made this not have a threat, if that makes sense, right? So queen takes e5, and the knight comes back. And so now, critical to white's development. Okay, so they want to play knight f3, drive our queen back. But then, okay, how do they get this bishop out, right? So they, they don't have g3. They need this move e3. They need this move e3. So what if we just shut that down? Bishop c5. And so they play the very natural knight f3. We come back. We're already in, in, in an area where there's no games in the Leech Chess database, but but this is very, very difficult for white because there's no e3. There's no e3, or, or at least it looks like there's no e3, right? So what do you do? How do you get this bishop out? Are you going to be able to make a long castle? Probably not. Any movement of this rook will lose the a2 pawn. And otherwise, what we're going to do is black is just native six castles and then see what's what's going on there. So I'll cover a couple moves here. So the, probably the best option for white, at least from a practical point of view, is actually just going for this. Uh, we all saw here. And then just knight of six. The thing is, if we did just take this pawn, we'd get our pawn back. But I think this is a good option for white because queen e2 forcing a queen trade. White here probably has better development and better pawn structure than us entering an, an, an even endgame material-wise. So what we can do is just delaying the capture there, knight of six. We're going to castle next turn, knight g4. We can try and really take that pawn in style um, and just have, it, have an excellent position. White has one more uh, option, which is the stockfish recommendation of queen c2 and rook c1, attacking our bishop. And now this move a3 saves the pawn and has one other sneaky idea of bishop to b4. So they're actually going to take our rook. But this is just an interesting line, I thought. So we gave our rook there, but e3 is really, really shut down with our queen and bishop here. This is just an interesting stockfish line. This bishop will sit really nicely on d5, and then this knight will develop because the bishop will also guard c6 in addition to putting lots of pressure here, lots of pressure here. So a really, really good compensation for the exchange. It's a very interesting position because it's just not clear what white does, uh, even though Stockfish evaluates this slightly in favor of white. So 
that covers bishop to d2, and so white here should probably play this move knight d2. Should probably play knight d2, and so the point being, now if queen takes e5, they play knight f3, also the knight's not on g3, right? So they're able here, so like the queen goes somewhere, but they're able here now to play g3 and castle and be up their precious, precious pawn. So what can we do? What can we do? Well, I have this very, very interesting idea of, because this is all dogfish stuff, and I mean, the odds that you face this are very, very low. We started with many tens of thousands of games, and now we're down to two games of people who have found this move knight d2. But nonetheless, I will address it, and I like this idea of knight h6. Okay, so the very natural knight f3 happens. Now we play bishop c5, protecting our pawn. Okay, so now they play g3, right? They're like, aha, we're, we're, we're so close. We're so close to making it out. Knight g4. Okay, they're like, okay, just bishop g2. What's going to happen? Is there going to be a sacrifice? Well, no, it doesn't actually work. d3, just e3. There's nothing here that actually works. Uh, d3 would have been to open up some threats here. But we do have one really nice move, and that is knight e3. Knight e3 with the fork on the queen and the bishop here. And so now, I mean, they must take the knight. They must take the knight. Everything else loses. And after d takes e3, this position is actually really interesting. Because if you're white, you might just be like, oh, okay, and now we castle, right? Because So, so we sacrifice a knight for a pawn. We're going to get that back imminently. That knight is pinned here. But if you just castle, then takes is check. Our other diagonal gets you. And then we actually took two pieces. We actually took two pieces here, and black is just now completely a piece ahead after they castle. So white can't do that. And then it's like... Okay, if you're white, then what do you do? I like posing these very, very difficult problems to my opponent. Like, okay, what do you do, right? You, like, you're in this pin, you can't castle. How do you break this pin? A3, B4 doesn't even really help. Like, you, like, you got a pin this way all, all the time as well, right? I think a really good move here for white is probably king to F1. Uh, Sidesteps this while not getting in the way of this. They found a light square. Okay, but then after takes, take queen B6. I mean... We've reached the end of the line of theory that I'll go to. I guess we're threatening this pawn, but we want a castle. We want to just scoop up this one and, you know, develop our pieces. So here white's up two pawns, but it seems pretty precarious. That number will probably be shaved to one uh, momentarily. And I don't know, they've played all the best stuff. They've played all the best stuff. And uh, we're, we're already well beyond any game in the database. No, nobody's even found this 93 idea yet. So hopefully one of you will be the first to, uh, to, to face that. And... I don't know, it's, it's like your opponent will also have to be a genius to get there as well. Because there's no way, zero chance they've prepped even a lick of theory for C4, A6. <laughs> even even the most even the most studious of English players. Okay, so I'll touch on Nate one here, which I think the engine likes a little bit better. We have Queen A5 check, Nate D2 would just be a transposition to Queen takes E5. Or, or, I'm sorry, to not Queen takes E5, <laughs> to playing this Knight H6 idea uh, and jumping in here for Knight E3 at the end. So Bishop to d2 here is, is the option that would be different. Queen takes e5, now it doesn't attack any knight. And so knight e f3 would just drive our queen away, and white would be all right in escaping the middle of the board. So here we should just go, come back, queen b6, after which we threaten b2, and here bishop c5. Okay, we, we make e3 very difficult, and we'll scoop up this pawn, um, probably without too much of resistance there. And again, it's hard for white to develop some of their pieces, like this poor knight that's moved and came all the way back. <laughs> uh, okay, so that covers knight c3 on the second move. We play b5, and it's very hard not to take this pawn because b4 is genuinely really annoying, both from a human and from a stockfish point of view. b4 is a very good idea to chase that knight. Um, and so they take it, we play d5, We if that knight comes back, we chase it, we chase it, we chase it, and if d4, we still want to chase it, chase it, chase it, and if not here, we play e4 for a really, really nice improved French structure. So that's the summary of knight c3. And I'll cover here a couple other moves other than knight c3. Because, I mean, it begs the question, okay, maybe this is just like a dumb gambit trap thing, right? Okay, it only works, like, we only get any fun if they go after uh, our, our pawn. What if they just play a supernatural move, like, let's say the second most common move here, g3. G3 here makes a lot of sense because B5 here is still most common, but Bishop G2, this is really annoying. We have to kind of deal with our Rook. We lost that diagonal and we don't have a Knight to annoy. We don't have a Knight to annoy. Where's the fun in that? So B5 here, I actually will not recommend, even though it's not like losing or anything, but I'll recommend here instead this move E5. And because it's actually super fun. So the point is, we just develop like this, right? This is all most common stuff. You can just check the database with me as well. The point is, you'll see here all of a sudden that the number of games like jumps so much. Why is the number of games here increasing so much? 
and it's because genuinely like like now we are actually finding like lots of games in the masters database i just switched to the masters database we're finding lots of games and the point is the point is if you just check this in the masters database right blah 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 blah, blah. Oh, what do you know a6 is a good move a6 is a good move it's genuinely a, a, a very well played move and so it's not a waste of time by any means okay why a6 why why, why does a6 make sense and the point is we want somewhere to store our bishop when so you see here e3 is very common and we play d6 so an 82 happens right we want somewhere to come back with for our bishop so let me just uh, navigate back to this position okay we want somewhere to come back for our bishop and now we pose some very interesting questions for white. So in the Leeches database here, the most common move is to castle, after which we now play, the, so with knight e2, one of the downsides of knight e2 is that it's a setup to play against f5, f4, right? It stops that really, really well. However, it does not stop, well, h5, h4. This knight instead should be on f3 to, to compete against that. And h5, h4, this can actually just completely run them over. If they just kind of play d4 and do nothing, okay, I mean, you can play move like knight e7 first, but, but just h4, this bishop will want to eventually swap over there. So, like, let's say, here, let's just play this out a bit. Great trade here. White keeps doing some stuff. Okay, I mean, we're getting ready to castle, but the point is that we swap that pawn, swap the bishop, open that h file by, by pushing this pawn. And queen h3 check and queen takes h2 um, can, can end the game like that. So, so that's kind of our general attack that we're looking for. But we also have some other nice ideas because take forcing f takes also really helps this bishop uh, do a great job. So here, I mean, you see the most common move is actually h4 trying to stop all that. But then we have g5. g5, a really, really nice move. Again, that knight should be on f3, right? Take, okay, we just take back. d4, just bishop g4. We're going to castle. We're going to play h4. And we're going to have some really, really fun times here. Uh, just, just playing black, pretty much just attacking completely for free. So just just really, really fun, fun, fun attacking stuff. I'll show you a couple other things here. If h3 is a good idea also, or a common idea, um, to respond to h4 with g4, again, white really does not want to allow taking and the opening of this file onto their king. But here we play f5, trying to force an, another pawn trade, um, which which also you know really opens up white's king. And here we just castle and you know make threats there. Uh, and eventually probably g5, g4, hopefully. So lots and lots of good stuff. So e3 and e2 is one of the more common ways to play against it, but I'll also show you, so like, why did they go for this? Okay, it's because of all these arrows. <laughs> I drew a lot of arrows here. So, okay, so we have bishop a7, which kills time. And so we can play bishop a7 and d6 to see which what they're doing with their knight, whether they're going f3 or e2. So we saw if they went to e2, we we're gonna go for this h5, h4. But if they go to f3, h5, h4, like I was saying, is not really as effective. So what we can go to instead is this move f5. And so here, okay, let's just rook b1, whatever. So they go with this and b4, right? So what I was drawing with all these arrows is f5, we want to play f4, right? So, okay, they play a4. We want to play queen e8, queen h5. We want to play f4, bishop h3, and we're going to attack like this. And again, this bishop is going to be very helpful. We're going to want to make that trade there. We're going to want to play knight g4. And eventually, after trading here, we're going to want to take this knight and come in for queen h2 checkmate so lots of fun attacking here this is more of a grand prix style attack so we kind of with a6 it's very helpful because we play bishop a7 and we see what they're doing with this knight if they go to f3 then we go f5 f4 if they go to e2 then we go h5 h4 and we can have a lot a lot of fun still attacking still attacking so we really really make use of a6 it is like a super super useful move that you see even at the highest levels that people are playing and spending the time to do otherwise this bishop gets chased uh, a ton right so a6 bishop a7 d6 see what your opponent's doing if they go for the fianchetto setup which a lot of english players like to do c4 they like to play g3 so and then all of a sudden we're playing e5 a legitimate move and making use of a6 so we can really really make use of a6 and it, it, that's true against any move so d4 as well this is also going to be true what we're going to play here I, uh, like the mo most legitimate option okay you can also play b5 but the most legitimate option is e6 and the point here so you see knight c3 and knight f3 and then all of a sudden, this is transposed to tons of games in the database and tons of games in the master database as well. And you see now people are playing c takes d5 in the master database. Uh, not so much in the leech s database, they're playing here knight f3, because the point of a6 was that we want to play d takes c4 and actually just play b5. We, we want to just play b5, so this pawn supports this pawn, supports this pawn. And you can just be up a pawn that way, right? So like knight f6, you just castle your king, put the bishop there. Uh, lots and lots of good stuff here. And, you know, even if they get this back, so like let's say something like this, Something like 
this, you know, e even if they're defending this pawn, the the, the nice part, and um, we also made that bishop move twice, right? So we waited until the bishop came out. The nice part of um, of that is that you can still get a tempo on the bishop. Like, you, you still get a tempo on the bishop here by playing this move b5. It's still a good idea, and you strike at the center with c5. So just a full repertoire of a6 that I'm offering uh, to all of you. And that's why, okay, in this position, a lot of people are playing c takes d5, which otherwise Queen's Gambit players don't really want to do because it helps out um, this bishop, right? And so here, okay, so black just develops normally and also has uh, a bishop that can likewise develop normally. So so lots of fun stuff. Lots and lots of fun stuff with a6. Okay, one more move I'll cover is this move e3, after which this gambit's not as good. This a bishop lands there. It's not as much compensation here. So I'll also recommend just e6 and the same idea there of playing d5 and d takes e4. Okay, now you will see me from yesterday. Now you'll see me from yesterday being so surprised about uh, getting this line before I've even released this video, but I decided to combine them. Thank you so, so much for watching Gambit Chad. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, oh, one last thing before I go, before I go and before you see me from yesterday, we need to talk about names. We need to talk about names. Oh my goodness. How could I forget? We need to talk about names. The most important thing. The most important thing. Okay. 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 So this is unnamed. It's completely, completely unnamed. So I was considering, I mean, I feel like Graf Gambit would be like a little bit vain. So I'm not really just going with Graf Gambit unless that's what you guys think. But I thought here what would be fun is because A, B, and C, we got the A, B, and C pawns. We could call it the Alphabet Gambit or the ABC Gambit. Uh, I was thinking Alphabet Gambit. I don't know if that's already taken. Let me know your, your thoughts on names in the comments below and your thoughts on this line. Looking forward to seeing all your games where you crush it. Post it in the Discord. Okay, without further ado, here's me from yesterday. Here's the stream. Peace out, Gambit Chads. Oh, this guy's number one in the arena. Oh, okay, okay. I have actually finished recording. I haven't even published this yet, but I finished recording against the English A6. <laughs> A6. I'm actually so excited to play it. I Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to play this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh my goodness. We are getting it. We are getting it. Okay, D4. This is the best move. This is the best move. I am very much in preparation here. The point of this gambit... Okay. Okay. I'm so, so excited. Alright, so we basically got a French. Right? Like, it would be a French if like he had a pawn there and I had pawns here and here. But removing this, removing this, it's similar-ish to the Wagon Gambit in that it just has this concept of sacrificing here, but it's not. Okay, f3 is one of the better moves, but bishop d6 and queen h4. So part of the point here is if you play f5, actually, they have takes, takes, and then check queen e5. I think it's part of the issue. But this structure in general is actually super, super good because, I mean, you can't castle long because I got files over here castle short that's just castling into my attack like these pawns are kind of like clearing the way for like my pieces to attack over here and in the center i've got that completely locked up as well so this is super super good okay takes he's trying to play dynamically but now the issue is i have takes g3 so he's playing just king out i'm taking it so i'm still down a pawn let's get those gambit glasses on may the power of potential youtube content compel me thank you <laughs> we're both thinking the same thing we are both thinking the same thing. All right, we're dodging the queen trade guarding here. You guys want to prepare your hello to YouTube comments right now. I'm very, very excited. But it's A6B5. I finished recording it. And I'm really excited to publish it very soon. Okay, bishop A6 is another idea that's common in these because you want to make this swap. All right, right now let's just play knight there. So if I am able to play knight takes a6, this is against a very good player too. This guy's number one in the arena in 2382. But let's try and... I wanted to jump in all the way there. All right. This is very exciting stuff. It's very exciting stuff. All right, how do you develop now? I mean, your king's on d2. He played one of the more solid lines. <laughs> Already saying I do too. Okay. I really better win this game. But yeah, a6, b5, super dangerous, super dangerous. He followed Stockfish's Rex rec recommendations pretty far. So, so this is a legit challenge to, to my stuff. All right, let's try and break with c5 here. Of course, that's where the king is. That's where I want things to open up. So I assume d5, but then that might hand me dangerous diagonals. 
As long as I just didn't give that to him with bishop b2 here. All right, let's trade this now. Okay, pawn takes. Now the bishop won't sit well on b2, right? Because this thing can go to e5. Might be nice. But also... All right, let's jump into b4. So another good feature of this line is that whenever the knight needs to jump into b4, oops, um, we have that with Duke because of this pin, right? Because we open that file. All right, let's jump in with our rook here, hitting the bishop. That move I did not see. Yeah, I didn't see the snippy 5 idea, actually. But still, this still should be good. I think I misplayed this a bit, but it still should be good just because their king's still floating in the middle. All right, this should be fun. Knight b4, got some threats. a3, and now we're going to jump into a really nice square right there. All right. Next, probably capture. I need to think about how I want to recapture. Probably with the queen, just because I, I feel like the knight's doing such a great job. Ooh. Okay, wait, now it takes knight, oh, takes over here. If you take it, I have takes there. Yeah, all my pieces are just so good. I mean, it's just so hard to play with the king in the middle, like this. This is looking good. <laughs> Giga horsey. Giga horsey, hero knight. Yeah, he's doing such a great job. All right, and the other one's just dancing around. I grab that. I mean, I don't want to get mated. All right, let's just play G. Yeah. Right, G six. So Queen E four takes. This is what I'm thinking about right now. Takes. So King takes D three. Oh, but you took like that. But then this should be a problem, right? Oh, Knight D six. I have a brilliant tactic. Take, take. And then they take c4. Yep. We got him. <laughs> we got him. Okay. 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 With the c4, a6. I'm taking name recommendations. The video ends right now with me asking for name recommendations uh, of, of, about this line. I should have already published it. <laughs> but say hi to YouTube. c4, a6. Oh my goodness, it's such a great gambit. It's such a great gambit because nobody knows what to do with this knight and we chase it all around. I'm so, so excited to publish this. Uh, okay, <laughs> thanks guys so much. <laughs> Subscribe. Subscribe when I put this on YouTube, homies. All right, we took down number one in the arena.